guys, so today's video is going to be something I haven't ever really done before on my channel and that is going to be to like sit down and actually like talk to you guys like So if you guys didn't know I just moved to Milan, Italy from Frankfurt, Germany This last move was then my second international move and I feel like I definitely have enough information and wisdom to share that I thought this video would be helpful. Anything that I forget to mention out loud will be in the actual blog post that will be in the link in the description. So check out that if you would rather have this like in readable form. Okay, so when I knew I needed to move to Milan, I automatically thought well, what's cheaper, using the train or using a budget airline? So I weighed the pros and cons of both options and for the main pro with the train is that they don't weigh your bags. You can take however much you can like feasibly carry. Whereas on airlines, especially budget airlines, they're so strict with that kind of stuff. On the other hand is that the train is obviously much slower than an airline is, but depending on where you're going in Europe, there may or may not actually be a train or a reasonable train. I pretty quickly decided that I wanted to do a budget airline and I've been flying with Ryanair for a long time now. All of my backpacking is done through Ryanair. I know they're not the most um, favored company on the, on the planet, but uh, for people like me who are students and broke AF, they're perfect. So I went on Black Friday and found a Black Friday sale. So the, the price of the discount that I got for the ticket and my checked bag that I purchased was actually the equivalent of me being able to purchase another discounted checked bag. So I got two checked, on, checked bags, a carry-on, and my personal item, which is my backpack that I used to backpack with. So once I had all of that figured out, what would be the most optimal method for me to actually travel, and then therefore what my baggage limit was, um, I could start actually planning. I could visually get an idea of what I needed to start getting rid of. And here's where the tips for downscaling come in. Since I knew about three and a half months in advance that I was going to be moving, I was able to do my first tip, which is to use up anything I feasibly could. I took a look at all my skincare and like perfume and food and everything, and I kind of categorized what I would be using the most based on how close it was to being empty and also how big the bottle size was. So for example, I have a face wash that was in a really big bottle. I knew I wouldn't be able to use it up completely, but I wanted to use it up enough to be able to fit the remainder in a travel size bottle. And that way I wouldn't have to get rid of the product and I wouldn't be taking this big, almost empty bottle. Another example is that I had a travel perfume that was already like three-fourths used up. And so I just wore that perfume every single day in order to use it up. And then I didn't have to worry about moving it. Another tip that I have for you guys is to get rid of any unnecessary packaging. For example, I bought an Apple Watch that I'm wearing now. The Facebook seller still had it in the box. So when they sent it to me, they sent it in a really nice box. And basically the only thing that the box had in it was the extra Apple Watch band that it comes with. And so there's really no purpose for me to keep the box considering this is the oldest iWatch and any resale value it has is pretty much gonna be garbage. It already has no resale value. That's why I got it for so cheap. And that way I save myself the size and space hassle of the box. So since I had so much time to sit in my flat and stare around at my things before having to move, I was able to like fixate on things in maybe a not healthy way. <laughs> and one of those things was a wine bottle that I got in Portugal and it had this beautiful design on the outside of the bottle. I was using it as a decorative item. You know, glass is heavy and as a wine bottle is really big, I had drank the wine already and it was just sitting there and I realized that I had a connection to the tile motif on the outside and the labeling more than I did the actual bottle. So I just cut the label off of it, stuck it into my book that is like a book of mementos. And that way I was able to keep the treasured memory without having to waste a bunch of space. So the biggest task that I had to do, and maybe this isn't so applicable in other places other than Germany, <laughs> but I had so many papers to sort through. Germany prints everything, they mail everything. And so that just leaves so many papers. I went through all of my giant stack of papers and got rid of everything. I had a little, um, I don't know what to call it. It's like a little ink roller that's supposed to be able to keep 
criminals from being able to like read what was written on the page for any sensitive information. I don't know how well it works. Uh, I don't think it's such a big deal in Germany anyways because you need like 500 numbers to be able to get anything done in Germany and so if you have one, what good's that going to do you? So I marked out any information that I thought was maybe sensitive and at the end of the day I threw out like a stack that was so thick and all of that is weight and it was really things that I didn't need. Like a supplemental um, lifestyle kind of hack to go along with that is just like take notes on your computer if you're in school and don't buy books, find the PDFs or buy them on iBooks or use a Kindle or I use my phone. Um, do as much as you can electronically because when you save paper, uh, as in the environment paper, and two, you save paper that you have to lug around with you, which, like I said before, is heavy. I apologize if you can hear the little kid screaming in the background. It's very distracting. <laughs> so then, of course, once you start to like actually go through things, uh, you realize that there are a lot of things you weren't using, like a pair of jeans that you don't really like anymore, anything that has significant value. I tried to sell it on Facebook. Germany's Facebook market is not the greatest, so I wasn't super successful with it, but I did get a couple bucks. I sold some purses that I wasn't using and some scarves and stuff like that. All of that is space saved. So anything that wasn't really worth selling, it didn't have, I wouldn't be able to ask for enough money to make it worth the time. I firstly offered to my friends, I had a bunch of make, well, not a bunch, I had some makeup that I didn't need or didn't want anymore. I made a little goodie bag, took that to a friend. I went through my food and all of the things that I knew my friends would like. I put in a bag, sent it to them. A lot of like tea and stuff I took to work and left for my colleagues since I know that they'll appreciate tea while they're working. I gave away to friends and coworkers anything that I knew that they would like and everything else I donated. So then all that's left after doing all of that kind of stuff is the things that you really need and then the things that you don't really need but are too sentimental or special and you don't want to get rid of. I was lucky enough, if you guys didn't see my last video, my home for the holidays video, that I unexpectedly went home this last Christmas and so I was able to take in my suitcase all the extra stuff that I didn't want to actually move, stuff that was just like sentimental, mementos, large decorative items, things like that. That was really helpful, but of course, not everybody's gonna have that luxury, and so I guess the, the alternative method of that tip would be to ship it home. So then after all of that, all that's left is the stuff that you actually really need, and in my case, uh, it was too much still. <laughs> When I moved to Germany, I really didn't have so much stuff, but then I realized that a reason I didn't have so much stuff is that I had planned to buy a lot of it there. So a lot, of, all of my coats and all of my sweaters and cold weather clothes I bought in Germany and I didn't move with me. And obviously that stuff takes a lot of space, coats are heavy, yada yada yada. I'm not surprised that I had more stuff when I moved this last time, but I was a little bit surprised that I wasn't able to fit it all in the suitcases. I ended up sending a box to Milan. It was actually more cost efficient for me to mail them than to pay for overages. Which leads me to my last tip for this video and it is to compare shipping costs to bag overages. So for Ryanair you are charged 10 euro for every kilogram that you are over which is really expensive. If you're not with a, with a budget line, it's probably more reasonable than that. So when I found out that my box that I had packed was seven kilograms, I knew that would be 70 euros in overcharges by Ryanair, and I knew for a fact shipping just from Germany to Italy would not be that expensive. In fact, it worked out to be a little under 40 euro, and so that was my cost comparison method that can also help you guys out if you're doing a similar move situation as I was. Anyways, so that is all of my tips for being able to fit your entire life into two suitcases, plus some. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe, I'll be making more content. I took a little bit of a hiatus from my blog and from YouTube over Christmas break, but now I'm back. And so yeah, subscribe, it'll be worth it. And go ahead and check the description down below for links to my blog and all my social media. And yeah, I think that's everything. Bye!